In this lecture, we are going to consider a partial differential equation which is studied very well in the literature. It is called Berger's equation and we consider certain initial value problems for Berger's equation. The Berger's equation is one of the simplest quasilinear equations and it exhibits many features of solutions that is common to nonlinear equations. Common in the sense they occur very frequently for many nonlinear equations. So, the nonlinear effect in the Berger's equation, uh, we already saw the Berger's equation, but we will again see the equation and then we will talk about it that. So, we are going to consider initial value problem. Um, it is an equation which has one variable is called a time variable. So, therefore, it is an initial value problem. We consider examples basically of the initial value problem, solve them explicitly and then study. Uh, if I consider an initial condition which is a monotonic function, what happens to the solution? So, question is why study Berger's equation? Why study this special equation? It is the simplest quasilinear equation. Its uh, solutions exhibit a typical behaviors of solutions to general quasilinear and hence even nonlinear equations. And the study tells us to be, be ready for certain surprises that we may find in studies of more general equations. So, we consider Cauchy data of this type ux0 equal to hx. If the variable y, it is a function of two variables, right, independent variables x and y. So, the variable y is interpreted as time, in fact, it is interpreted as time. So, this is nothing but initial value problem, that is why we write initial value problem for Berger's equation. In the examples that follow, we use functions h of x which are monotonic functions, uh, but they are of the following type, they are discontinuous or piecewise linear or smooth functions, differentiable functions. Of course, you may ask this question, why consider non-differentiable functions? Yes, our existence and uniqueness theorem is not applicable for such an H. However, we have to deal with such as such H okay, as they are physically relevant. We cannot always say that my theorem allows only smooth uh, functions as the data, I will work with only that. No, these are also important, it is also important to study such uh, functions H. Of course, in such cases solutions needs to be interpreted differently, not the way that we have been talking about. Uh, so far the idea of solution that we have introduced is what is called a classical solution. So, we have to now generalize the notion of solution, we have to define what do we mean by solution so that whatever we do is meaningful. And computations are very easy for the kind of function that we propose to deal with. And formula for solutions within quotes uh, can be derived. So, it helps in understanding properties of solutions very clearly. So, we find expressions or formula for solutions. Okay. We get formulas basically some formula like f of x something like that. Then we understand hey, what is the domain of this f, for what x that f of x makes sense. These questions are to be asked later. So, first we find formulas and then ask when are these formula actually give rise to solutions. Once again observations made in these examples continue to hold with a smoother function. It is not that smooth function things are alright, no. Okay. But when you consider smooth functions, you cannot uh, you know go from one constant to another constant in a smooth way. It takes some time where the function is not constant and computations are difficult and illustrating them by graphs is difficult. But we can be guaranteed assured that similar difficulties will be there even for such age. Only thing it is more complicated. So, why consider non-differential functions? Again same thing, we are going to use non-differential functions even though they are bad there is a general theory, this is some kind of assurance. There is a theory do not worry in which we can make sense of whatever we are doing. So, please go ahead and do, do not bother about uh, whether it is correct or not. And that discussion is out of scope for this course. We will see a glimpse of it later on in the next lecture. References are books on partial differential equations by Evans or uh, Fulan Prasad and Renuka Ravindran. And there is a book by Smaller, Shockwaves and Reaction Diffusion Equations. 
there are also many more uh, beautiful books written on this kind of material. So, this is the Burgers equation u y plus u u x equal to 0. We would love to write u t plus u x equal to 0, but since we are going to follow a method of characteristics where t is used as a parameter running on the characteristic curve, we are not using the t here. We still write u y plus u u x equal to 0. And initial condition u x 0 equal to h x, x in r y positive. So, let us parameterize the given Cauchy data. We need to solve right the method of characteristics. Let us follow that. So, first is parameterization of the Cauchy data x equal to s, y equal to 0, z equal to h s. Now, characteristic system of ODE dx by dt is equal to a in this case that is a u x that is u which is z dy by dt is 1, dz by dt is 0. We need to solve this set of ODEs, system of ODEs with this initial conditions. Observe that z does not depend on t. What does that mean? It means that solution is constant along each base characteristic curve. And the solution is uh, satisfying the initial conditions is easily given by this. Okay. First is z dz by dt is 0. So, z is constant at t equal to 0 it has to be h of s. So, that is h of s and dy by dt equal to 1 therefore y equal to t plus constant but at 0 it should be 0 it is t. Now when it comes to x dx by dt is z what is z hs therefore dx by dt equal to hs if you solve you get this with this initial condition very easy. Now u equal to h of x minus y u that is what we get using these 3 equations. Yeah ideally we should solve for uh, t and s in terms of x and y and then go and substitute here. Okay. So, h of somebody right. So, if I show s is equal to x minus y u we are done which comes from here s equal to x minus h of s is supposed to be the solution u and t is the y. So, that is why you get this implicit expression u equal to h of x minus y u. Of course, when we admit this as an implicit solution provided you can solve for u as a function of x and y. So, note that this equation is meaningful even if h is not differentiable right it is just asking uh, uh, that uh, u equal to h of x minus y u imagine h is continuous the equation is meaningful. Now, question is whether you can solve u in terms of x and y is another question. We may be able to define a function u of x y from this equation defined on some subdomain of omega 2. What is omega 2 recall? It is a projection of omega 3. What is omega 3? Omega 3 is where the coefficients of the quasi-linear equations are defined. Omega 2 is a projection of omega 3 to x y plane. Solutions will be defined in some domain of omega, subdomain of omega 2. So, it is possible and function thus obtained may turn out to be a solution, may turn out to be differentiable on a further subdomain. Therefore, it will be a solution to Burgers equation. So, therefore, given this possibilities what we do in the examples is we arrive at this equation somehow solve for u and then ask a on what domain it is differentiable catch hold of that domain and say this function defined on this domain is a solution of the Burgers equation. That is what we are going to see in the examples later on. Now, for each fixed s what does this represent? This is the base characteristics x, x equal to h s t plus s comma y equal to t as t varies s is fixed. What is this set? It is a straight line passing through the point s 0. Okay, this is the point s comma 0. So, it is a straight line passing through s 0 this point with slope 1 by h s. Therefore, what we observe is that it is possible in principle for example, like that okay, this is some s at the next point if the slope is uh, like that. So, that equation go uh, straight line goes like this uh, sorry this is not correct. Yep. So, at this point 
equation goes uh, like that, it is fine they do not touch here right. But on the other hand if you have like this okay, and at this point the slope is like that. So, they will in intersect. So, base characteristics can intersect it depends on HS we will see that. So, this base characteristics we use a notation LS. LS is a straight line L for line S for passing through this point as 0 and is the equation. Slope clearly is 1 by HS. If you take two different S1 and S2 and take base characteristics through those two points do they intersect we already saw the picture right. This question is important why are we asking this question? This question is important as we anticipate a potential problem. Recall that any solution to Burger's equation is constant along each base characteristic curve. For example, we had this and we had a base characteristic curve like that and we had a base characteristic curve like that. Okay. So, this point is S1, 0, this point is S2, 0. What we saw is sol any solution of the Burger's equation has to be constant on each base characteristic curve. And what is the value here? It is HS1. And here, uh, sorry, this is HS2. This is HS1. So, therefore, on the green line, it is HS1. On the blue line, it is HS2. What will it be at this point of intersection? Problem. See, so base characteristics they carry information from the gamma 2 this is gamma 2 it carries the information which is given namely u must be equal to h x that is the information given on this x axis that is being carried forward by these lines which are characteristic curves. So, they are carriers of information from gamma 2. So, on L s 1 u is h s 1 on L s 2 u is h s 2 what if they are not same? right it means conflicting information is reaching at the points of intersection of the base characteristic curves what will happen there solution becomes multi valued right if at all you want to say solution so there is a trouble at those points that's why this question is important now where where do they intersect ls1 and ls2 we have two equations straight line equations uh, when you write down uh, if they intersect at a point x0 y0 that should lie on both ls1 and ls2 this is the equation for ls1 first line second one is a equation for the ls2 and it should be satisfied that means this system should have a solution for x0 y0 it's a non homogeneous uh, system so if the determinant is non zero definitely you have a system you have a solution for x0 y0 and determinant is hs1 minus hs2 so if hs1 equal to hs2 then they are parallel lines they don't intersect therefore no problem but if they are not equal then the system has a solution they intersect at this point leading to an ambiguity in the value of the u at that point x0 y0 because it is both hs1 and hs2 and they are not equal so there is a problem there is ambiguity should it be hs1 or should it be hs2 now let us look at the transversality condition JTS okay, which is dou xy by dou ts is, is this. So, this turns out to be minus of 1 plus h dash s into t from our existence and uniqueness theorem for uh, Cauchy problems for quasi-linear equations if this is non-zero no problem if this is 0 troubles to be expected where is it 0 precisely when h prime s uh, t plus 1 equal to 0 that is yeah, from our experience recall the discussion during the proof of existence uniqueness theorem we expect troubles at points where this happens. We will get back to this discussion later, later on. So, j of 0 s naught this is actually where what we use to apply our theorem okay, because we do not know at a general t. So, t equal to 0 only we have the information. But in this in the last slide we have all the information we have explicitly solved everything that is why we could write JTS and we know this expression. 
but otherwise we do not know the uh, particular the second column at arbitrary t only at t equal to 0. So, j of 0 s naught is minus 1 it is never 0. So, it just means that there is a existence uniqueness at every point which is nearby at some points nearby the datum curve. Okay, this is a solution, solution exists, good. Once again as before the expression is meaningful even if uh, h is not differentiable. But this may not represent a solution, the way a solution is defined there could be problems. We uh, go ahead without worrying about this for reasons explained at the beginning of this lecture. Let us look at uh, specific examples. So, we are going to consider 4 examples of Cauchy problems for Burger's equation. Initial profiles the function h of x okay, its graph that can be called as initial profile. Those are monotonic functions that are piecewise linear or piecewise constant. Note that such functions are differentiable with exception of a few points. Monoton monotonic functions are very close to being differentiable. So, they are differentiable almost everywhere and explicit expression for u can be obtained in these examples. And the function exhibits the effects of nonlinear nature of Burger's equation and the monotonicity of the initial profile both. So, these examples highlight the role played by the nonlinearity of a partial differential equation in solutions to Cauchy problems. Now, in this example method of characteristics fails to determine a solution in some region of the upper half plane which means it is not global with respect to domain. So, consider Burger's equation with the Cauchy data minus 1 for negative x and 1 from x equal to 0 onwards. Ls we already observed the family of base characteristics are equations with uh, slope 1 by h s. So, for s less than 0 l s has slope minus 1 and u is minus 1 on that right because the data carried forward is minus 1. For s greater than or equal to 0 slope is 1 because h s is 1 1 by h s is 1 h s is 1 therefore this is 1 slope 1 and the information it takes is 1, so solution will be 1. Let us draw a picture. So, this is the picture. So, here we had uh, s negative, this is for s greater than or equal to 0, these are the base characteristic curves, these are the base characteristic curves corresponding to uh, positive s. So, these are all lines parallel to y equal to x these are lines parallel to y equal to minus x. Now, what happens in the in between this region? In this region no base characteristic curves. So, no information is being passed from the initial uh, uh, data that is the gamma 2 into this region which is in the v shaped region. Okay. Dots means this not included because h, h of x was like that right, h of x was minus 1 if x is less than 0. That is the reason, uh, reason why this 0 line is not included x equal to minus 1. Okay. So, in the V-shaped region no base characteristics pass, therefore no information on the solution from x axis reaches there via base characteristic curves. This is happening because the jump in h x because it suddenly shifts from minus 1 to 1, therefore the slopes also across s equal to 0 that is what results in the V-shaped region. Now, u equal to minus 1 is a solution defined on this domain you can see in the picture 1 is a solution on this domain. So, what to do in the v shaped region that is a natural question uh, what happens in the v shaped region we saw via base characteristic curves, but can you define a solution in the v shaped region this is the question that we ask. Yes something can be done so that we can define a solution uh, if you observe the solution I have put it in quotes means some generalized notion of solution but this discussion is out of scope for this course. So, look up the references that I mentioned earlier whenever you are interested in this question. 
So, if we choose an h that goes from minus 1 to 1 in a continuous manner, then V shaped region would not be there, right? We observed that that is because of jump, sudden jump from minus 1 to 1, we had this problem. So, think about this. Now, let us look at the second example. Here, what happens is solution becomes multi valued in some places. So, h is now 1 minus 1, okay? It is a decreasing function, it is a monotonic function, but decreasing. equation for the base characteristics is the same still. So, s less than 0 L s has slope 1 and it carries solution will be 1 there and for s greater than or equal to 0 h is minus 1 therefore, slope is minus 1 and solution will be minus 1. Let us look at the picture here. Okay. But these families intersect in this V shape region, in this region maybe this line is excluded, but here base characteristics are inter intersecting and they carry two different informations. So, if you want to say it is a solution at this point, it is both 1 and minus 1 if you want to say that. So, you have to change your notion of solution, but we see that conflicting information is reaching there. So, there is some problem. L minus 3 and L 4, for example, L minus 3 is this line and L 4 is this line. So, they intersect here. Okay, at this point, it is both 1 because of this and minus 1 because of this. Now, we can write down where 1 is a solution and minus 1 is a solution. Once again, there is a problem in the V shaped region. The answer is same as given before, something can be done which is out of scope. You can read the books that I have suggested. Did you notice that you are thinking of global solutions by asking this question, right? Once you get some solution in the V-shaped region, you have the solution in the entire upper half plane. So, it is there at the back of our mind. Let us look at the third example. Here, initial profile is very nice initial profile. It is a linear polynomial 1 minus x, okay? no jumps, nothing. Continuously differentiable, c infinity it is analytic polynomial after all. So, let us substitute and get the expressions for u. We get u x y equal to 1 minus x by 1 minus y obviously y should not be equal to 1. So, it means uh, the line y equal to 1 u is not defined. So, it is defined on union of two disjoint sets one above the line y equal to 1, one below the line y equal to 1. u solves Burger's equation on each of these sets. Of the two, only this one below the line y equal to 1 is in touch with x axis which is where that is a gamma 2, that is where initial data is prescribed. Therefore, uh, that is a solution with this domain. So, this is a picture. Any two distinct base characteristic curves intersect at this point 1 comma 1 and solution becomes multivalued at 1 comma 1. Are there regions in the upper half plane where a solution is not determined? Apart from the line y equal to 1, it looks like yes because there seems to be no characteristics passing through this, but that is not the problem because as you see the line from here is going like this. So, if you want to go like this, it might have gone out of the picture that is why you are not seeing. So, characteristics do fill up all these points except these dotted points base characteristics go through each and every point. Now, this is the most complicated example. Why? Because it, it is mixing all the three things 1, 1 minus x and 0. Okay? So, it is a piecewise constant and in between linear we will see what is going to happen. There are three distinct families of base characteristic curves depending on s. Okay, earlier we had only s less than 0, s greater than 0. Now, what will we have? We will have s less than or equal to 0 one case between 0 and 1 and bigger than or equal to 1. Let us call give names. So, it is easy for us to refer to. F1 family corresponds to s less than or equal to 0. 
these are lines parallel to y equal to x because uh, the initial condition is 1 right. So, therefore, slope is 1 and therefore, the value that solution takes along them will be 1. F2 family is that 1 minus x. So, solution will be like 1 minus x by 1 minus y. F3 family is where the solution will be 0 and the slope will be like 1 by 0. So, they are lines parallel to x equal to 1. Yes, yeah. LS has slope changing from 1 to infinity whenever s is between 0 and 1 as s, s goes from 0 to 1. For s greater than or equal to 1, LS has infinite slope as we saw these are lines parallel to x equal to 1. So, question is do base characters intersect? So, we have to analyze uh, cases whether family any two members of family F1 intersect, F1 and F2 intersect, F1, F3 intersect, any two members of family of F2 intersect or some member of F2 intersect some family some member of F3. These are the various cases we have to analyze. So, take S1 and S2, less than S2 do the base characteristics uh, LS1, LS2 intersect. So, this is the picture. Here these are all lines parallel to y equal to x. Okay. Here these are the lines parallel to y axis or x equal to 1. And in this region which is identified here in this region which extends base characteristics intersect solution becomes multivalued. So, here u is equal to 1 because my initial condition h of x is equal to 1 here. Here h of x equal to 0 for x greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, the solution is 0. Here the solution is 1 because of this. Here it was the polynomial 1 minus uh, x. Therefore, the solution will turn out to be 1 minus x by 1 minus y. Now, at what point they intersect? It is algebra. I will skip the algebra and they are all intersect here at this point. If you start here, Okay, no, do not intersect. Now, the question to be asked is at this height do they intersect? Yes, they intersect because at these points. At this height do they intersect? Which height? This height? No, no two base characteristic intersect. Then I rise a like uh, you know high jump, I raise the bar a bit and I ask is this the place? No. It turns out this is the place where base characteristics start meeting that is basically this family is what is responsible for that all of them are meeting at this. This is the first time if you y is called a time t time the first instance where some trouble starts brewing is at t equal to 1. So, this is often called breaking time for solution. Okay. So, two members of F1 family clearly do not intersect because all of them are parallel lines, they, they never intersect. Similarly, two members of F3 they do not intersect, but two members of F2 they always intersect at this point. Okay. And then you can ask when is this family intersect this that is once again at this point because this line is going right. And here uh, the smallest time would be this. So, please uh, compute this. So, whenever base characteristic intersect then the thing of interest is always what is the first time at which they start intersecting until that time they should not be intersecting. So, this is just algebra. So, I just skip, but I just keep it uh, on the screen for some time so that you can do the computation. as S1 varies in minus infinity 0 means F1 family. This is F2 family, S2 is in 0 comma 1 is F2 family. It is 1. So, I am showing this once again through picture. Now, F1 family and F3 family, where do they intersect? At 1 1. 
it means some member of the family of F1 meets some member of the family F3 at the point 1 1. Now we have 2 F3. Once again the point 1 1. Now both of them are from F3 family, they do not intersect because they are parallel lines. So, no two base characteristics intersect in the open region bounded by x axis and the line y equal to 1, we have observed this. Solution is uniquely determined in that region and is given by this formula. Observe that u is not a differential function on the line segment x equal to y and x equal to 1. Let us summarize. So, we discussed 4 initial value problems for Burgers equation. We understood that a solution may not be determined on the entire region omega 2 where the PDE is post due to base characteristics not filling up the entire region. This was the case in one example. Or base characteristic curves intersecting with each other, this is true in the other two examples and carrying in conflicting information possibly. So, that is a problem. So, now question is how to overcome these obstacles of the type that we discussed above and have a solution uh, that means we have to define a new notion of solution wherever the PD is defined we want that in the context of Burgers equation. Let us limit ourselves to the context of Burgers equation that will be discussed in the next lecture where we will be worried only about how to give a meaningful solution uh, or how to make sense of these functions which you obtained here as solutions uh, in a some kind of generalized sense uh, that will be discussed in the next lecture. Thank you.